<laughs> so there you go. People want to know how skinny our hulls are and why we suffer with weight. That's probably a pretty good view showing why we suffer from weight because our hulls are pretty skinny. Yeah, that's that's a fairly skinny set of hulls. Well, it's a fairly skinny hull. Waterline marking dots, uh, or our um, yeah <laughs> um, marker indicator dots. So here's the ones on my transom. So here's my transom. A little bit hard to uh, deal with because I'm trying to hold on to the boat. All the rest, it's been my beautiful transom's been banged around a little bit, but uh, it's life on board a boat. Um, but yeah. Here is the dot. Uh, you can see there, it's got a little bit of green fuzzy grass in it. But more importantly, you can see, you know, we're in a bay where there's a little bit of waves and swell and all the things, but roughly where the water line's sitting in relation to. And generally speaking, the dot's under the water saying that we're a little bit heavy at the moment, so it's a good indicator as to where things are going. What you can really see is actually the oxidization of the handy valve, uh, which is pretty darn close to where the um, dot is. But generally speaking, uh, we're a little bit bummed down in our trim at the moment, which is um, not that great, but that's what it is at the moment. I've got to move some stuff around. It's even makes, what makes it even worse is the dinghy's off because I'm in the dinghy. Yeah, that's the transom one. Now we're going to go look at the bow one. Okay, and up here in the bow. Well, there's my little dot on the bow here. It's a little bit more difficult to see. Um, because on the bow here it's actually quite clean. Uh, and the anti fouls been rubbed away a little bit um, but yeah it's right there on my bow yeah that's pretty the boat's floating reasonably close on the thing so um, yeah, a little bit hard to see uh, looking at the stain marks we've been sitting up around here I've had uh, we're on a mooring ball and there's a bunch of scratches and stuff in my Andy fell from where it was um, when the wind got really light and shifty and the boat kept running over the mooring ball. But yeah. Anyway, but yeah, that's it on my bow here. So that's where I put the marks on the bow and the stern to look at the trim of my boat. Um, probably not the best bait be looking at it in because it's a little bit lumpy bumpy but when you're in a marina um, or really still bay it's really really easy to see um, where the trim of the boat is and you'll also see I can actually see if I'm up or down in the bow in relation to the dot in relation to the waterline if I was here I wouldn't know whether I'm 20 mil up or 20 mil down here um, even with the, the wavy stuff, I know that on average the wave is above here and then below here and that I'm somewhere in the middle. Uh, so it's a little bit more of a fine tune on where my uh, waterline should be. But um, I'll show you what, I, what tools I used to make this. Um, it's really simple, like, well I mean it's pretty simple, it's like insanely simple. but. I'll show you the, the simple tools I use to make it. So next time you haul out, 
um, and you want to um, do a really simple job and you know where your waterline should be or where you want to keep the trim of your boat because you know it's performing there um, as reference marks um, I'll show you the really high-tech tools we use to, to make those okay so here's the high-tech tools for doing the job um, tool number one drill battery drill generally tool number two drill bits <laughs> and there you have it so the drill bit I use uh, is the uh, I use a six mil but it's broken so I'm gonna show you the 5.5 see if I can get this thing to focus right now when I drilled it I don't drill the whole hole I just drill from the very tip here to the shoulder of the countersink and that's it now a little secret is you wrap the end of the drill bit here in masking tape all right now i'm going to have to get some masking tape so it's not all the tools i'm going to get some masking tape and i'm going to wrap, wrap the end so i can show you how that works okay so one of the tricks to making sure that you don't drill a hole through your bow or your transom while you're doing it because we only want the the from the tip of the drill to the shoulder of the um web these is so long since I've learned the names of the drill bits um, that we don't actually want to drill a hole we just want to make this countersink you can use a countersink bit as well um, but I generally find the countersink bits are a little bit big in diameter but if you have a little uh, six mil countersink bit uh, that will work but generally I like to use the um, drills just because I've got them in my hands and I'm lazy to go with anything else but the trick is is to get a roll of masking tape and quite literally just keep rolling it round around 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 until you build quite a shoulder of um, masking tape now you actually get a little bit more but you can see now I've started to build a shoulder of masking tape here believe it or not <laughs> this, this actually helps really helps and stops the drill bit from biting and going and drilling a hole in your boat but still be very 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 careful because the uh, masking tape will peel back if you're pushing hard so when you're doing this you do it very lightly and very gently um, yeah, so that you're holding your, your drill and you just beep 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 and you're just literally taking away the um, countersink depth don't drill a hole in your boat because you can drill a boat a hole in your boat um, so use stopper collars if you've got stopper collars use masking tape and when I mean masking tape like that's that's not it you build this up to uh, like two three millimeters of um, of, of uh, masking tape so there's a good shoulder there for it to, to um, hold on if you've got a countersink use a countersink um, yeah but that's that's the highly technical tool for uh, putting the little indicator mark on the bow and the transom now I'm going to show you what we do on the race boats Uh, slightly different beastie um, is we use these things they're machine screws they're not that long it's only that I've got some long ones in my boat um, they're generally really short like um, in the order of that so they're n normally five to six mil long and what we do hang on <coughs> struggling with the focus yeah and what we do is we have a um, if we if we've planned it properly which normally we don't um, there's a little insert uh, of solid core uh, where the mark goes but generally nine times out of ten everyone forgets it so what we have to do is we drill and backfill and then put an extra little skin thing over it um, just because everyone's forgotten to um, 
and we drill and we tap um, the hole for this to go in. So it's a machine screw, so we drill it and then we tap it. Um, you'll see... Uh, I did a video with drilling and tapping into composites somewhere. Maybe not. It's been, but it's a video coming out, yeah? I think it was it when you were with the watermaker. Yeah. Um, there'll be a video somewhere where I'm drilling and tapping composites to put these screws in. Um, it's coming up. It's coming up. Um, so we drill and tap, tap a hole. We also countersink where the machine's screw goes so that it's flush with the hull. Um, but what we do is we actually countersink a little bit too far so that the screw can go in and out just that little bit because there's two screws that we use. There's a flathead one and there's a Phillips head one and they both have two slightly different uses on um, marking the measurement point on a boat. Um, this one is generally used just at the waterline and it's a pain in the backside because you've got to get the slot to line up with the waterline and that's why I said we sort of slightly overdo the thread so we can actually twist it in and out and when we put it in for the final time we put it in with um, some resin so that it goes in and it stays in and it stays at the right orientation. Then we use the Phillips head one generally in areas where um, we're marking not only a horizontal measurement mark like a waterline but also the um, vertical component like in the transoms and the stems um, or if there's a midship uh, measurement or some sort of point where the, the two measurement lines cross over we'll use uh, a Phillips head or sometimes we'll actually just, just use a Phillips head even at the waterline um, and we take the horizontal line as our waterline mark but that's the reason why we'd use the two different ones in marking a, a race boat and the reason we use these as opposed to li drilling little dots is it's a little bit more permanent um, and it's quite easy to identify them because when we paint the boats we leave these um, shiny silver we don't actually paint them so they're very identifiable but yeah so there's uh, marking waterline and measurement marks on a boat. Um, Did you say what type of screws? Like material wise? Stainless steel. Um, we got fancy and started using titanium ones because these will bleed in carbon boats. They bleed a little bit of rust. Um, but generally stainless steel ones um, because they're available. Titanium ones were the, if we had them we'd use them. But that's it, they're just machine screws, not self tampers. Um, yeah, so that's uh, how we mark our waterline.